Hello friends, for a long time I was surrounded by the theme of anime volleyball, but I still could not even start watching this work. A lot of comments on this topic appeared under my videos, as well as regular reviews of famous volleyball bloggers and even professional athletes surfaced. And somehow I've always pulled away from it. It's not like I'm an anime hater or anything like that. Due to lack of time I simply watch very few movies and even more so TV series, that's why I never got to this Spokon. Spokon is a genre of anime or manga with a sports bias. And it was only in 2022 that I decided to see what kind of anime volleyball it was. Because judging by the enthusiastic reviews of the audience, it had to be something epic. This anime not only attracted attention, but also quickly increased the popularity of the sport itself as a whole, not only in Asia, but also around the world. And this entailed a huge influx of children who just started running to the volleyball sections. So in this video I'll tell you what kind of anime it is, if you haven't watched it yet, and I will also share my emotions from watching and also try to analyze the technical component of the athletes from this animated work. So as usual we will not delay any longer, let's go! It all starts with the fact that a young boy named Hinata Shoyo, driving past a showcase with televisions, sees on the screen a match of the National Volleyball Championship among high schools where a short player from Karasuno, nicknamed Little Giant, in a high jump knocks the ball in without noticing a triple block in front of him. And little Hinata suddenly finds motivation and wants to repeat the fate of a volleyball player so similar to him. Once at Yukigoka High School, Hinata faces the usual problem for provincial cities. He has has nowhere to play volleyball. There was not a single volleyball player in the school and there was only a volleyball fan club, in which there was only one person. But this did not stop him and he began to train hard, trying to spend as much time with the ball as possible. Although it is clear that just stuffing the ball over yourself will not give proper progress in the development of skills. So Shoyo had to enroll in a women's volleyball club to have at least some opportunity to train. And he was not stopped even by the fact that other guys from school made fun of him. But in order to participate in Hinata in competitions, it was necessary to assemble his men's team. And it took him a lot of time and effort to somehow persuade his friends, plus newcomers came to school, whom Shoyo agitated to join a volleyball club. And now, three years after our hero saw the little giant, Shoyo and his team go to the first tournament. And already this moment made me remember many cases from my life when I saw guys who periodically play volleyball for fun, but they don't want to participate in competitions, simply afraid of losing out there and embarrassing themselves. It seems to me that this fear often puts an end to sports success, because it does not allow you to take a step to a new level and leaves people in their comfort zone. But fortunately, the Yukigaoka high school team found its own ideological leader who convinced the guys to participate in the tournament. And despite the partner's lack of at least some adequate volleyball skills, Hinata was confident that he alone could beat any opponent. But unfortunately, Yukigaoka immediately falls on one of the favorites of the championship, Kitagawa High School, and loses to them. And even here they clearly manage to show that no matter how good your jump was, your height is still important in volleyball as well as an arsenal of technical skills. So I will give advice to all novice volleyball players, there is no point in mindlessly chasing a jump and making its increase a priority task for yourself. Sooner or later there will be a block that you will not be able to jump over anyway. By the end of the match, our main character also realized that he decided to recoup from the block, and this not only brought the coveted point scored, but also surprised the opponent. As everyone was struck by Hinata's desire to fight in any episode, even when it doesn't seem to make any sense. And yes, judging by the training of our hero, he got the jump from nature, so if you were not born with a genetic gift, you will have to sweat a lot to pump your jump. And of course, the author clearly points out that volleyball is a team sport, and it is simply unrealistic to achieve victories here alone. Shoyo's main rival is Kitagawa Seta, Kagiyama, with whom they manage to enter into a conflict of interest even before the game. And after the defeat, Hinata promised Tobio that he would take away from him the title of King of the Court. And it seems that the authors of this Spokon were not set up to create anime for a narrow volleyball community, but wanted to attract new people to this sport. So already in the first series they explain to us who the setter is. And looking at Kageyama, real life examples also pop up in front of my eyes. This setter believes that he always does everything perfectly, and partners need to adapt to his ideal sets. 
and not to focus on the capabilities of the attackers. Excessive demands on partners for dedication in those moments when the situation does not require it at all also alienates him from the whole team. And so, motivated Hinata finally finds himself at Karasuno High School, where he plans to repeat the fate of the little giant, as well as beat Kageyama. But there was no limit to his surprise when Shoyo flew into the hall and saw the same setter there. If getting into Karasuno was expected for the main character, because he dreamed of repeating the fate of a tiny giant, then for Tobio it was just a backup option, because setter was not taken to the strongest school because of his bad character and poor grades. A conflict broke out between Hinata and Kageyama, which could not be stopped by any of the members of the volleyball team, nor even the dean of the faculty. And after an unfortunate incident, during the competition between the boys, the team captain, Daichi Sawamura, expels a couple of first-year students from the hall, forbidding them to train until they realize that they are now playing for the same school. Karasuno, after the success of the Little Giant, has already received the status of Fallen Champions and Wingless Ravens, because they did not make their way to the National Championship anymore. And the author once again emphasizes how important a cohesive team is in volleyball, but Kageyama did not agree with this at this stage, clearly stating that no team will succeed without Setter, which I certainly agree with him. A good setter can become the main driving force of a team, but without a cohesive team he will not be able to achieve visible results. Karasuno players attended the match between Hinata and Kageyama and saw that the former lacked a quality setter and the latter a fast spiker, and if they could get along with each other, they would be a great addition to the team. And in order to regain the captain's favor, Kageyama offers him to fight in a 2 vs 2 match, but Daichi finds, as it seems to him, a more interesting option a 3-on-3 three -three match against other first-year students, but Tanaka, the current Karasuno player, was sent to help Hinata and Kageyama. The task seemed simple, but these newcomers were the tall Tsukishima and his comrade Yamaguchi, and even if this duel was not of fundamental importance for them, they would not mind beating the king of the court, although Kageyama himself did not like such a nickname at all. Tanaka, realizing that it would be problematic to count on winning without training, secretly early in the morning conducts training for boys, which was later joined by Koshi Sugawara, the current Karasuno setter. Hinata is madly eager to attack, but Kageyama makes it clear that what's the point of sets if Shoyo can't even bring the ball to the setter. And this is another very valuable lesson from the authors of Haikyuu, because the rally starts with a pass, and if you don't know how to pass, then it may not come to spike either. Suga then helps Hinata practice receiving the ball between lessons, explaining that everything starts with the legs, and the hands in this case are just an additional tool so you will not be able to become a good receiver if you concentrate only on your hands and not on footwork and getting under the ball. Kageyama, noticing Shoyo training at recess, realized that this guy, as well as Seto himself, is ready to do anything for the sake of victory. So before lessons, the boys trained in the gym, Hinata trained with Koshi during recess, and after lessons, until the very night, the guy spent time practicing the pass. And during one of these classes, the boys met their future rivals, which gave them even more motivation. Shoyo's progress was not long in coming, so Kageyama still decided to give the set to his partner, whom not so long ago he had not even counted on. And Hinata, having received his first good set in his life, just explodes with happiness. And here I can understand him perfectly. I've been training without a setter for most of my life, so good sets, which usually strong players didn't even pay attention to, became a source of incredible pleasure for me. And I wanted to get them again and again. So the day of that fateful match has come. Sawamura informed the guys that he would be the third player in the opposing team. And even if he did not pursue the goal of winning by all means, but the young blocker Tsukishima was very sarcastic towards his rivals and was very eager to defeat Kageyama. After several successful attacks by Tanaka, Kageyama decides to start sets to Hinata, but Tsukishima blocked Shoyo several times in a row, and also did not miss the opportunity to remind him about growth. And here the authors refer us to the nickname setter, the king of the court. Kageyama was nicknamed by former teammates for his nasty, narcissistic and selfish nature. Trying to speed up the game enough to get ahead of the opponent's block, Kageyama did not take into account that his attackers were not ready for this. And then, one day, during the final match, no one responded to his set. And since then, Setter has not tried to give his trademark quick sets. 
but now the same situation is happening on the court. The attacker cannot beat the block and a faster set would not hurt him. And even if it didn't work out very well from the first time, Kagiyama still realized for himself that Hinata is the spiker he lacked in high school. Although their first attempts in this direction were not very successful, and they had to go through a difficult path to understand each other. Kagiyama had to put the ball in Hinata's hand wherever he was, and Shoyo had to open up in the free zone and literally with his eyes closed just jump and hit the ball. Here, perhaps for the first time in the series that I watched, the authors moved away from reality and slightly embellished the level of abilities of the heroes. And opening in a free zone on the set is something like basketball at all. But despite this, it is worth noting that the message of this idea is wonderful. Because if you don't completely trust your partner, then you can hardly hope for serious success in such a team sport as volleyball. If two good players in one team are just two good players, then two players with established team interactions are already serious weapons. Daichi, as promised, accepted Kagayama and Hinata into the ranks of the team after they won a well-deserved victory in a 3-on-3 match. Tsukishima and Yamaguchi also received their team equipment because they did not argue with the captain and no one's wigs had been knocked down before. And on such a wonderful note, the advisor of the volleyball club, Takeda, breaks into the hall, who informs that Karasuno will have a friendly match with one of the best teams of the prefecture, namely Aoba Josai High School. At first, it might have seemed like a wonderful plot twist, but even then there was a logical justification for everything. Coach Seiyo, the so-called Aoba Josai school, wanted to see Kageyama in his team, but he chose Shiratorizawa. After the setter was not accepted to this school, he decided not to return to the rejected coach, but went to Karasuno. So in this way, Coach Seijo decided to look at the coveted setter. Therefore, Kageyama's presence on the court in this match was mandatory. In order to prepare for the match more productively, Daichi decided to announce the composition of the team in advance, and the authors did not miss the opportunity to introduce us to the main volleyball positions. Setter, the player who controls the attack. Outside is a versatile and balanced player, through which most of the attacks pass. Middle is a player whose task is to block the opponent's attacks, as well as to conduct lightning attacks, thereby concentrating the attention of the opponent's block on himself. And so Hinata was supposed to act as a bait in the upcoming match. But it definitely had to be a problem for Karasuno on the block. After all, even here they will explain to us that it is more important for a growth blocker to jump, because a tall player will reach the desired point faster. Then they decided to rely on the speed and reflexes of our hero, that he would always keep up with the attacks and just soften them. Although every time I play against strong middles, even after reading my opponent, I either don't have time to jump to the right height due to high speed, or I simply don't have enough arm length to close the spike. So if everything does not work out perfectly, then there are not so many chances of success here. And Hinata himself is clearly worried about his unusual position, because since high school he has not performed at competitions, and here the opponent is strong and the position is unusual. And unfortunately, none of the partners even guessed how to help their teammate in this situation. Such an experience became an obvious cause of insomnia the night before the game, so instead of being rested and ready for battle, Hinata felt, to put it mildly, not in the best way during the trip to the match. So no matter how responsible the match is, always try to control your emotions, and until the moment of the match itself, do not even think about it. Because the longer you tune into the game, the more likely you are to screw up. How many players have I seen that simply burned out before the whistle? The verbal conflict between the teams also fueled interest in the duel, during which Kagayama's former schoolmates did not miss the opportunity to remind him of his selfish style of play. Hinata tried to convince them otherwise, but in the rush of arguments it only worsened the emotional state of the player. He was absolutely not ready for the game. Shoyo made mistakes where it wasn't even worth doing. He took on other people's balls, touched the net and made mistakes on the serve. The apogee was supposed to be the ball hitting Kagayama's head on the set ball, which foreshadowed Hinata's departure to the bench. But Kagayama reacted calmly enough to this, so Shoyo realized that there was nothing to be afraid of now, and he could focus on the game. Tanaka's motivational speech especially helped with this. Everyone perfectly understood that Hinata was far from the best player, but at the same time, they trusted him and were ready to step away from the result so that the boy could unleash his full potential. And Hinata was thrilled that he finally became part of a real team, and I can't disagree with him. 
Playing in a cool team is an unforgettable emotion, and only in a good team a strong player will be able to unleash his potential to the maximum, so no one could have imagined that such an inexperienced and unplayed team would be able to surprise a more skilled opponent. And then, unexpectedly, it turns out that all this time Seijo had a backup setter playing and the main setter and team captain Oikawa was injured. Although then they came and were ready to go on the court, which looks strange enough, but it doesn't matter. Kageyama was familiar with Oikawa firsthand, and it was he who was an example for setter Karasuno in terms of attack and serve. So Oikawa, after a good warm-up, the importance of which the authors did not forget to remind the young viewer, came out to strengthen serve. And Seijo, from the score of 20, 24 were almost able to recoup. But still, due to softening on the block and Hinata's quick attack, Karasuno wins this match. And it seems that the events that have happened in recent weeks have greatly changed Kageyama, and his former teammate Kindaichi could not believe that Setter is now worried not only for himself but for his entire team. Oikawa pointed out Karasuno's weaknesses with his serve, so for a successful performance at the upcoming tournament, the team needed to work hard on pass and defense, but without a good coach, this task was almost impossible. And then it turns out that the legendary coach Karasuno, Ukai, should return to work. And also Nishinoya, nicknamed Karasuno's guardian deity, returned to the team, which in fact turned out to be even lower than Hinata. But despite this, new players were still needed in the team, because without Libero and Opposite, a good team would not be able to exist. The guys asked why Nishinoya, who studied at a fairly strong school, entered Karasuno, to which a sufficiently vital response was received. This place of study is located near the house and the school uniform is beautiful here, especially for girls. What is vital in this? It is often possible to notice that children do not choose a promising place of study with some future options for moving forward in life, but simply something comfortable and not very far from home. Hinata, looking at Nishinoya's excellent pass, realizes that he is playing in the libero position. Shoyo asks him to teach him to pass the ball, because in his opinion, this is the most important element in volleyball. And here I agree with him. Hinata also tells Nishinoya about his nickname, Karasuno's guardian deity, which Libero was, to put it mildly, pleasantly surprised by. So after such a fiery speech, Nishinoya could not refuse Hinata and agreed to train him. Here, the Vyothas explain to us who Libero is in volleyball. Libero is a player who specializes in defensive actions, and in order to improve the team's pass and defense, they change with the middle blockers of the backline. It often happens that Libero can be the emotional core of the team, so if you are not only a good defender, but also a charismatic personality, then you will be welcome in any team. Therefore, no matter how tall you are, if you want to play volleyball and are passionate about this game, then you can always find a way to benefit the team. Yes, you may not become a professional player, but that's not always the most important thing. And as for me, the main thing is to enjoy your favorite game. Meanwhile, Suga tried to convince Kanasuno's best player, Asahi, to return to the team, but the former school team leader was adamant. Because, as it happens in life, Asahi is tired of volleyball, and his eyes no longer burn with the usual brilliance at the sight of a volleyball, and let him have no physical injuries. But mental problems can sometimes also become a serious problem for an athlete. In one of the key matches, all Asahi's attacks were blocked, and due to the fact that he always takes all the blame on himself, psychologically he could not cope with that burden and decided to quit volleyball. According to the good old tradition, Takeda bursts into the hall with another portion of good news. In addition to the announcement of the training camp, at the end Karasuno had to play in a friendly match with the team from Tokyo, Nekoma. Previously, these fights took place regularly and they were even given the name Cats vs Ravens, battle at the garbage dump. It sounds rather doubtful, but okay. The only thing that spoiled everything was the fact that Nishinoya refused to play without Asahi, so Hinata and Kageyama decided to try again to convince the player to return to the team. Shoyo's inspiring story seemed very familiar to Asahi, and he took every word of the first year student deeply to heart. And Kageyama in turn stressed that only the team achieves victory, which not so long ago he himself did not understand. So if you have lost, you should share this unpleasant state together and not try to take all the blame on yourself. And it seems that the words of the newcomers were able to reach Asahi and he slowly began to remember why he still loved volleyball. He was worried that Suga and Nishinoya would not accept him back, but on the contrary, they are just waiting for his return. 
Although it was strange to think so about Suga, considering that he had already come to school for Asahi. In search of a trainer, Takeda tried unsuccessfully several times to convince Ukai to take up this position. This character periodically appeared as a seller on the market. Kishin was not interested in the coaching position, but the upcoming training match against Nekoma dramatically changed his position on this issue, because he could not allow his successors to lose in such a fundamental duel for him. It was a real shock for the team, because they believed that this was just a salesman from a store and not the grandson of the legendary director Ukai and even a volleyball coach. Kishin immediately organizes sparring for his new wards with the Karasuno district team, where he planned to check the current level of young players. However, it was not possible to assemble the district team in full, so Suga, Asahi and Nishinoya will compete against the current Karasuno school team in a more or less familiar combination. But a lot of time has passed since then, even though Suga and Nishinoya still got along well together, but Asahi could not come to his senses after that terrible game that caused the conflict with Libero. Only, unlike Asai, Suga and Nishinoya did not put all the blame on their best spiker in difficult moments and were always ready to help him. And a player who feels sincere support from his team is always capable of something more than what he can achieve alone. So it seems that all the grievances were forgotten and it was possible to start training again. It is important to understand that defense and coverage are very important elements in volleyball. Yes, absolutely all the balls cannot be saved, but every ball left in the game deprives the opponent of confidence, and each successful cover adds confidence to your attackers. The new coach Karasuno was amazed by the interactions of Kageyama and Hinata. For him, their game seemed very unusual, because the setter did not make any signals, no matter how the attacker made any requests. Yes, even voice commands did not follow, although at the same time everything turned out perfectly for them. But despite Kajama's genius, he will have to work hard to earn the trust of Ukai. And then a little advice from the setter arrives to the audience. If you want your block to be more successful, then you need to try to move your hands to the opponent's side and not just leave them straight. And in no case do not forget about concentration. If you do not focus as much as possible on the episode, then you can not only lose the ball, but also get this ball in the face. Because this time, Hinata decided to dream on the court how great it would be to be as tall and strong as Asahi. And such thoughts probably visited any undersized volleyball player. But unfortunately, in this regard, volleyball is quite a tough sport. No one will give you a discount for being shorter, younger, weaker or whatever. There are no height and weight categories here. So if you want to fight on equal terms with high players, you will simply have to play better than them despite all the physical differences. Yes, you may not become the best player, but if you cope with the tasks assigned to you, then your team will win. And this is much more important than this temporary glory. I've already come to terms with the fact that I can't regularly hammer the ball into the court or beat the group block cleanly. Therefore, my style of play often looks not very spectacular, but this does not prevent it from being effective. Next, from the motivational part, we turn to the theoretical one. The authors introduce us to float serve, let it not look as intimidating as the power one, but with proper execution. Its effectiveness can be significantly higher, especially at the amateur level. An unpredictable trajectory can often become a bigger problem than power. So, it was the problems in the past that caused the defeat in the friendly match, so the newcomers of Karasuno still had a lot of work to do on this element. This game brought a lot of new positive thoughts to the team, and with renewed vigor, they were ready to continue training in the hope of new big victories.